Okay, so let's get started. So I've got a, um, a class prepared today. So we're gonna to come to standing. So come to standing first. Um, basically, a lot of back bends in today's class. So yesterday we did a lot of forward bends. Today it's gonna to be a lot more back bends and I'll just put you all on mute because it's flicking around. Yeah. Yeah, so um so today we're gonna to do a lot a lot more back bends. So we just gotta prepare a little bit for the back bends. So the first thing I want to do is the dangling pose. Okay, so just do it the, the way I showed yesterday, try and get into that practice of forward bending. So shoulder blades together, stir them up, grab the hips and just tilt forward. So make sure you feel that tilt in the pelvis before you come forward. And you're going to feel that length in the entire spine. That'll get you deeper into that pose. That's it, perfect. And just work your way into that. And that'll, what that's gonna do is stop that dumping in the lower back. Okay, so we're gonna be in this for, it's a tough pose first up for three minutes, but I'm sure you guys can do it. I know you can do it. Okay, so I'm just connecting to that breath as you're in this. And slowly allow yourself, so just, just work with the knees as well. So make sure that, you know, if you need the knees, bend, bend them. And you can slowly start straightening if you need to. But just work with how you feel. And try and allow those hips to start coming further up and the head to drop further down. Beautiful. That's it, just connect to the breath. So five minutes in this is a, a five minutes, three minutes in this is a, is a tough start, but you're gonna feel really nice when, when it comes to the back bends, so. So you're already a minute gone. Now start connecting to that Ujjayi breath, so that Deep inhale, so hearing the snoring sound in the back of the throat, the restriction, the restricting, restricting of the breath in the throat, as well as the exhale, feeling the same. So you're just over halfway through now. This is the only standing pose we'll be doing. And you should feel it, you should feel those hamstrings really deep, stretching into those hamstrings. Now just for the last minute, connect to the breath a bit deeper, so have that deeper inhale. And when you inhale, push the hips up higher and exhale, drop the head lower. So inhale, push the hips up, exhale, drop the head lower. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's only a small amount, just continually do that. So hips up high on the inhale, exhale, drop the head low. So you've got 30 seconds to go. Beautiful, really nice forward bends. So we're getting that reverse blood flow through the brain, through the upper body. So it's promoting um, positive blood flow. Now, getting rid of all that stagnant blood hanging around. When you're ready, bend the knees and slowly work your way up. Slowly, slowly come up, that's it. And then we're just gonna sit in Sukhasana, so a cross-legged position, nice comfortable one. 
And we're just going to um, connect to the breath here, relax, particularly after that forward fold. So just come into like a meditative position. So just bring the hands on the knees. Shut the eyes down. And then just spend this next minute and a half just focusing on the breath as we're sitting here. And when we're, while we're sitting here, just bring the shoulder blades together and stir them up. So just chin towards the chest, so we're lengthening through the spine. So these small little movements that we're doing is preparing us, preparing the spine. So just that with the shoulder blades together, the sternum coming up, chin towards the chest, we're giving ourselves space in the spine. Okay, we need that space to do the back bends that we're going to do today. And this is a really nice time to check in with the breath. Get rid of that shallow breathing. Work through the deep. Inhale and just lengthen the exhale as much as you can until everything is completely out of the lungs. And it's a really nice space to bring yourself into just to prepare yourself for the class. Just another four or five breaths here. Sometimes in a yoga class, we forget to do this and just ground. It's a really grounding experience right now. We try and fit so many poses into an hour. We forget to ground. So we're just grounding now, giving ourselves space in the mind and the spine. And then when you're ready, we're going to come into the first pose. We're going to stay where we are now. We're going to come into uh, Gurudasana arms, which is eagle arms. So we'll do the right one first. So bring the, the arms up and then bring them around. So underneath the right arm goes underneath the left, sorry, and then just come into the cross arms. Again, if that's too much, shoulders. So grabbing the shoulders, but crossing the arms and then grabbing the shoulders, if that's the way you need to do it. But try and work towards this as much as you can. And once you get into the position, it's a couple of minutes in this pose here, stretching through the shoulders first. Start lifting the elbows up. So lifting up. And then just bring the belly button into the spine and then focus on the breath. In the stillness. Beautiful. Really nice, relaxing pose in a seated position, this one is. When you're crossing the legs over, it becomes a bit hectic. But you can really get in a space here where you're feeling a nice, comfortable stretch. And if you want to just get to your edge, just move beyond the edge or get to the edge, I should say, just lift the elbows up a little bit higher, holding there. We've got just under a minute to go. So you can either challenge yourself or just hold for that really nice stretch. Belly button to the spine, keep raising through the spine as you lift the elbows a bit higher. Last few breaths, 
Challenge yourself if you need to, lift those elbows up higher. And then release those arms. Just roll the shoulders over. Give them a nice roll and then we move to the other side. So left arm underneath the right. So lift the arms up, left under right. And lifting. Connecting to the breath. You can. And then working deep into that stretch. really relaxing pose you, you can relax in this pose through focus so the idea of this pose gurudasana is it's an eagle pose but also the guru part is um, calmness and focus One of the first things they teach you in yoga is, is when you become a yoga teacher is, is you can't focus unless you can. So you've got to focus. So you've got to work on the breath. It doesn't matter what pose you're in. Focus on the breath. Become calm. Become still. And then that laser beam focus just kicks in. This, these poses here on the mat just, just give us a chance to practice how to become calm and still in any moment in life. I'm just focusing on the breath and knowing who we are. So slowly coming out of the pose. And then just the counter pose for that is just bringing the hands behind the body. Interlace all 10 fingers, roll the shoulder blades together and lift those arms up. Just reaching back and lifting up, reaching back and lifting up. Another three breaths here, reach back, lift up, reach back, lift up. And then relax the arms. Down by the side, so give yourself a bit of a shake. And I forgot what pose we're moving into next. Oh, yeah. So while we're in this position, we're going to go to square pose. So we'll work on the hips now. So we stretch through the shoulders, the spine. So we're working on the hips. So square pose is just this one here where we bring our left foot down first. We don't want the heel to come to the buttocks, we want it away. Then bring the right foot up. And this will be challenging first thing in the morning is getting into this pose. So stacking the shins on each other, on top of each other. If that's too much and your, your knees are up like this, just go into the one-legged version, which is left leg out straight, right foot up, holding in there. Try and place something under here if you're in the one-legged version, so underneath the right leg. If you're in both legs, and you might need to place something under the right leg for a little while until it starts coming down. So this is a nice place to be if you're just getting into the cross-legged version and eventually you just move the block or the towel or whatever you've got under there. Perfect. And then you can start moving forward if you choose to. Start coming forward. You can have a cushion or a blanket or a bolster in front of you or the block. This is nice if you've got like a big cushion or a bolster and you can start moving forward into that position. You, you don't want this leg to, to, to be under any stress. So you want to place something under it if it's shaking. And if you're in one-legged version, same thing. You want something under there 
and start coming forward. Because we're trying to coax that leg to come down so then you can cross the legs. So you should be working deep into the, the hips, particularly the right hip and the knees and ankles. Locking off a lot of blood flow. So try and get into that space where you're nice and comfortable. And focus on that breath. So you're more than halfway now. Really good, everyone's getting deeper into that pose. So just keep working with that breath for the last 30 seconds. You look a lot more comfortable in that pose now, Mary, which is good. It's just slow progressions in poses like this. As I've told you before, it took me quite a few years to be able to cross my legs. So once you can cross your legs, it's, it's even, you move to that next level again. It's just continually working through all the phases that you need to get through. Stretch the legs out if you need to, allow the blood to flow back through for a second or two, and then switch to the other side. So right leg under, so if you're in one, Legged version, right leg out, left foot up as high as you can go. Put something under that left thigh if you can, if you need to. Right leg under, left leg over. This is um, hurting me a lot today. <laughs> Some days I can get into this pose and just fly through it and get to the floor but today. A little bit... Um, a little bit tougher. Maybe it was the Metafit that I did yesterday. <laughs> so work with it, work with how you feel today. I think the, the difference with yoga and, and training, like I know a lot of you train a lot, is training your goals and you push yourself to get to those goals. Whereas is yoga, you can come and sit on the mat, learn about yourself on how you feel today and, you know, just through feelings and through emotions, physicality, and then you work with what you've got with that. It's a whole different mentality and I think the combination of both is really important to to be able to allow yourself the space on the mat. And when you're in training, you've got that, that different mentality and different focus. So you're halfway through on this side.
So just on a minute to go. So this is when we should be at probably our deepest right now. So you can just move to that little edge right there. Just get the breath. focus of just the breath, the Ujjayi breath. And 30 seconds left. When you're ready, slowly, slowly come out. We're going to move into Shavasana. Those legs come back into Shavasana. Relaxing and just allowing that blood to start flowing through those knees, through the hips. And when you're ready, bring the knees into the chest. And just give yourself a hug. Spend a bit of time hugging yourself here, loving yourself, enjoying how you feel. Enjoy the movement of your body. And when you're ready, just roll up. And we're going to come up onto our knees, we're going to come into onto all fours. But before we do that, um, we're going to stretch through the toes. So we're going to do toe squat. So just come up on the toes. Sitting back. And bring the, the hands into prayer position. Again, the reason we do this is to bring the, the focus onto the thumbs pushing in to the sternum, so we lift the sternum up and bring the shoulder blades together. That way we're lengthening through the spine, not dumping, and we're getting the correct um, rhythm and, and movement through the, through the breath. So the next four poses, five including this one, is we're, we're not in the poses for a great deal of time, and you'll see why. Um, they're a little bit, little bit challenging, a bit of um, balance, and, and obviously back bends as well. So. But you'll feel good at the end of this next lot of poses. So just a couple more breaths. And then coming down. Release the toes, just allow that blood to flow through. You can come into the opposite stretch if you like, so lifting the knees off the floor, or just, just enjoy the blood to flow through those toes. And then when you're ready, just coming onto all four. So we're going to we're going to challenge ourselves here with a bit of a balancing pose. We're going to be here for how long does I set it? A minute and a half. So coming onto all fours, and we're going to come into, I think it's called half Superman or something, someone called it. So we'll go with that. So we're going to just kick the left foot back. So just send the left foot as far back as you can. Try and have the, 
the ankle in line with the hip and then bring the right arm up and hold. So get in that position and just hold there. So talk about Guru Asana with um, focus. This is the same, we're just focusing. Switch on the core, so the belly button, bring it to the spine and keep pushing that left leg back so you can switch on the glute and reaching forward. So holding here, keep pushing down through that left arm as you reach the right arm forward. Push down through the right knee as you reach the left leg back. Find a focus, a spot of drishti. We call it in yoga, drishti, which means focal point or spot. Just find that place and be as still as possible. That left leg is always going to want to drop down, so keep bringing it up. Keep testing and squeezing that glute as you reach forward with the right hand. Got 30 seconds left. Beautiful. So straighten the left elbow, straighten the left leg, bring the ankle up a little bit higher of the left leg and reach forward with the right hand a little bit further. So reach as far as you can, both ways, forward and back and then bring the right hand down, left knee down. Beautiful. So now we'll bring the right leg back and then the left arm up. Get that focus point again. Working on balance here, so working on getting that core set. So belly button to the spine, reach forward, reach back. So the physicality is, is getting that that core switched on. The mental side is focus on one spot, just focusing on one spot. And keeping that breath in check, Ujjayi breath. So lift that right heel up a little bit higher as you reach forward with the left. Um, and make sure that the left hand is in line with the left shoulder as well as you Push through the floor with the right hand. Lift that right leg up. Reach forward. Reach back. 30 seconds to go. Lift that arm up. Bit of shaking maybe. I am shaking like a leaf here. Right leg up. Keep reaching forward. Last 15 seconds. Reach forward, reach back, lift the right leg up, lift the left arm up, and then slowly come down. Coming into child's pose, knees wide out, hips back. So make sure you bring the hips back first and then come into child's pose. The reason for that pose was just to switch the core on because the next um, three, four poses are all back bends. So I usually do a thing called the awesome foursome. I've got a nasty look here, <laughs> but um, it's a little bit different. It's not the awesome foursome, similar. So when you're ready, help yourself up and we're going to come on to, we're going to come into Sphinx pose, so everyone should know that one. So prone position, bring the elbows underneath the shoulders, hands, palms on the floor. Bring the feet towards each other if you can, they don't have to be together, but towards each other. And lift, uh, bring the shoulder blades together, stern them up. Chin up, chest up. So as I said, we're not in these poses for a great amount of time because we're doing a lot of back bends. So we're just trying to work through the entire spine with the back bend. 
instead of just focusing on one spot. So this is a lower spine. Continually bring the shoulder blades together, stir them up. And keep pushing down through the forearms as you lift that sternum up. Just keep lifting the chest up, lifting the sternum up. So we've got about 50 seconds to go. So you can either stay where you are or squeeze the glutes and come into seal pose. This is the pose I used to call dolphin pose until I realized probably three years into my yoga teaching that dolphins don't do this. It's seals. <laughs> so I always get mixed up just about, I'm about to say the name of the pose. So you can hold here and just for the last 15 seconds now we're going to come back into Sphinx. So relax the glutes, chin up, chest up. And then crocodile pose. So bring the feet out wide, toes out, heels in. Stack the hands and relax the back. So all these back bends are really challenging. As I said yesterday, we're squeezing the adrenal glands a lot. So over this next Four or five minutes, we're getting a lot of uh, the massaging the adrenal glands, which we need. It's a de-stressing um, process by, by massaging the adrenal glands. Sometimes we pump too much adrenaline through our bodies. And this is regulation of the, the adrenaline flow. Back bends regulates that. So when you're ready, just come up and look up, and I'm gonna give you a few options here. We're coming into Porna Salabhasana, which is, which is full locus pose. But what I want you to do is, is if you need a prop, use the prop. So what the pose is, is this here, is coming up with the chest, up with the arms, and up with the legs. Okay, so, what I suggest you do, if that's a lot of something in front of you, then you're getting the back bend straight away. And so all you've got to do is squeeze the glutes, bring the legs up. I'll do a side on. So you're getting the back bend straight away, so you don't have to bring that tension into your back. And then you're just lifting the legs and lifting the arms. So that's the pose there. So without that, I'm not going to use that, but I used to, just to get used to that back bend. So without that, it's this. You can even place a block underneath you if you want to do that. Okay, we're in this for 10 minutes. <laughs> Joking. People are already in it, go in it. Push through it, it's a minute. So we want to make sure that those thighs stay off the ground. Okay, squeeze the glutes, thighs off the ground. Slowly start lifting that chest up. Bring the hands up, chest up, legs up. You need to drop out, you drop out, come back in. It's a tough pose. Shoulder blades together, chin up, chest up, legs off the ground. So make sure the thighs are off the ground. Hands up, legs up, chin up. Chest up. Beautiful. Everyone's listening to their body. It's really good. Last 20 seconds, legs up. Chest up. Arms up. Chin away from the chest. Shoulder blades together. Thighs off the floor. Breathe. And relax.
It's a good minute in that pose. Some of you are a bit more. This is where you might feel the heart pounding into the ground. So make sure you just rest, come into crocodile pose. So we've got two more back bends in a row to go. And in the next one, you can use like the block or the bolster like I just showed you again in front of you, if you like. We can do it without. So when you're ready, we're gonna come into Dhanurasana, which is bow pose. So bring the knees, bend the knees up, and grab around the ankles. If you can't grab the ankles, you can, you can use a strap here as well. So you can place the strap around and pull on the strap around the ankles. Shoulder blades together. Lift the chest off the floor and bring the chin up and come up like a cobra. And then bring the thighs off the floor and then kick the hands, uh, sorry, the feet into the hands and keep kicking and kick and kick. You can always relax, come back into it. If you want those toes up as high as possible, eventually the, the feet come to the back of the head, okay? Don't look for me to do it because I can't do it. But eventually that's what happens. Feet come back to the head, so you're dropping your head back, bringing the feet towards the head. So that's the pose there. Come up with the chest, up with the thighs, Back with the head, forward with the toes. So come up, 25 seconds to go. It's a tough one. Keep breathing. It's always good to relax in this and then come back into it. Should be building up the heat and then slowly, slowly come out. Back in crocodile pose. So we got back bend to go. It's a longer back bend, but um, we're in a bit of a safer position to hold it longer. So just a few more breaths in. Um, crocodile pose. Then when you're ready, help yourself up. I'm going to come into um, melting heart. The melting heart is when we have the hips up. So uh, child's pose, the hips are back here. Melting heart, the hips up. We bring the chest towards the floor. Again, you can have your cushion underneath your chest if you like, or the block. Bring the chest and chin to the floor. Looking forward, hips up. So we're in this a little bit longer. You only need about a minute and a half in this. So hips up, beautiful. Chest, chin to the floor. You can't bring your chin to the floor. Just bring it whenever you can onto the floor. You should feel okay in this pose after the poses that we've just done because we've really worked through the entire spine. So this now is just getting the hips up high, allowing the blood to flow through that curve in the back, that natural curve in the back. So 
So back bends are energy building. So today you should have loads of energy just from these back bends. And not just that, you'll feel mentally a lot more positive from back bends. It's a very positive um, form of, of poses is all the back bends. And also physically we're strengthening the spine and strengthening the muscles that hold the spine. So the spine erecto muscles. When you're ready, we're going to come out and come into child's pose. So bring those big toes together, knees out, hips back to the heels, and then come down. So now what we're doing is stretching that lower spine with a forward bend, and relaxing the rest of the back. So if you know um, anyone who has like, lower back issues and stuff, um, send them a copy of this video when I send it to you guys. Just send them a copy and get them to do this. This is the type of, this process here is what they use in yoga therapy hospitals in India for lower back issues. So it strengthens the back as well as getting rid of all the stagnation in the back. So you'll feel today, you'll feel the difference today in your back for sure. But you feel free to give this to people who are struggling with back injuries and a lot of people find it hard to get out of bed in the morning. This is the type of things they need to be doing. I know physios will tell you not to back bend, but you'll never, ever, ever fix your back without back bend, forward bend, lateral and twist. You'll never fix your back without all of those together. So when you're ready, help yourself up. We're going to come into Supta Bajasana. Got a head shake here with the live audience. <laughs> so Supta Bajasana is where we're on our knees. So come up onto the knees. Sit down between the heels. Just remember that could be enough. You can sit on a block or sit on wherever you need to. And then work your way back. If you've got a bolster, it's really nice to have the bolster behind. You could even prop it up with a block. And try and lay back on that. So that's really nice. That's a comfortable position to be in. Or come all the way back. Elbows down, head down, shoulders down, and grabbing each elbow. Okay, so there are those options if you need a one-legged option. Left leg straight out, bend the right knee up. Come on the top of that foot, work your way back. Feel that stretch in the quad and hold there. Beautiful. You're all in this pose amazingly well. It's good. I always forget to turn the timer on in this pose. So again, this is sort of a back bend. It's not really a full back bend, but we are lifting the hips up the further we go back. So people that I can see on there are definitely in a back bend. Um, but we're lengthening through. The quads is the main, well, there's a few main things. We're blocking off blood flow to the knee and the ankle, so we're going to flush through those joints. And as I've said before, this is used for knee injuries, not to give them, but to fix them. And if you're all the way in it, the hips will be coming up, so you'll be getting a back bend and also stretch through the abdominals as well. If you feel a little bit of tension in the lower back, if you're all the way back, place a cushion or a towel or a blanket under there and that'll just support that base there. Because sometimes, I can get into this pose pretty well most of the time, but sometimes you need a little bit of support just under the lower back.
And if you are doing single leg option, just change to the other leg now. So bring the right leg out and bend the left leg up. And just focus on that Ujjayi breath. Whenever you feel the need to come out, come out. Go straight into Shavasana. As quickly, but as elegantly as possible. So you've got 30 seconds to go. And when you're ready, slowly start working your way out. Looping yourself over into Shavasana. Stretching those legs out. And just feel that beautiful blood flow through the knees and through the ankles, through the feet, through the hips. Just a couple of poses to go. When you're ready, bring the knees up, give them a really nice squeeze. And then going to come up into frog pose. So frog pose is knees out wide. Point the toes out, push the hips back to the heels and coming into bring those hips back to the heels to stretch through those um, adductor muscles. So you want to feel that stretch. The closer you get to the ground, the more of a back bend you get in this. So it's, it is actually a back bend. So it's a two minute pose today. So we're gonna hold it for two minutes. Cause it's a back bend, we've been in a lot of back bends. Just keep pushing those hips back towards the heels. Once your body says stop, just back off a touch and start using the breath. Okay? That breath will just guide you past those blocking points. Slowly but surely, you'll just move through this pose with a little bit more ease each time. So you've got 50 seconds to go here. So work with that breath. Attempt to hold it as long as you can without compromising, hurting the body. It's for sure you don't want to hurt the body. Just always practice ahimsa, 
you know, which is non-violence to the body. That's not just physically, that's the way you talk to yourself as well. So if you think that you're not in the position right or whatever, that's just violence to the body. So just allow yourself to be where you are, how you are, and just enjoy the experience in this moment. When you're ready, bring the chest away from the floor. So just push up away from the floor. Then flip yourself over into Shavasana. And again, allowing that blood, you'll just feel it flow through those hips. Really, really nice. Just enjoy. The relaxation. Before we move into just one more pose before Shavasana. It's going to be a longer hill pose. When you're ready, bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice hug, rolling up to a seated position. We're going to come into dragon fly pose. So legs out wide. If you need cushions, bolsters in front of you, grab them all now. What I want to show you here is that tilting forward again. Okay, so when we started in um, dangling pose, this is what we did, and this is what we need to do again here. So lengthen through the spine, shoulder blades together, tilt the hips, just feel that tilt. It's a little bit harder to feel because the legs are on the ground, but you'll feel it coming forward. Once you start feeling that deep stretch in the hamstring, then you can start bringing the elbows down or reaching out wide, slowly work your way into the pose. That way there's no dumping in the back. Really nice way to set this up as well is if you've got a bolster or a big cushion, you can just have the block or build up that block in front of the bolster or the cushion and just come down into this position here. That's really nice and then you slowly work your way down and eventually work your way down to a flat bolster or cushion, then the block comes into play. And then all the way down. This is a um, really nice pose to finish the class off with. It's a complete lengthening pose. So we're lengthening through the entire legs, both legs through the hamstrings, and then lengthening through the back, right at the way. So reaching forward with that chin, with that chest, getting a nice, deep, deep stretch of the body. So again, this pose is really important to configure with all the back bends because we're just allowing now to get the complete amount of space that we need in our spine or that, we're, that we can achieve at the moment in the spine. Working with the breath. So you've still got just over two minutes to go. So slowly feel yourself getting deeper into this pose. And if you've got 
any props in front of you, just test yourself without the prop to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. And allow the body to show you where it wants to go. A minute and 20 seconds left. So I've done a breakdown of this pose and it's on the website. So if you, if you, want to get deeper into this pose or learn how to get deeper into the pose or break it down in many different ways um, so you can achieve that. Just the last few breaths, 15 seconds to go. So just take that deep, deep inhale. Using the joy breath. Long, slow exhale. And then when you're ready, help yourself up. And what you're gonna do is come into a cross-legged position or have the legs straight out depending on how you feel at the moment. We're not here for too much longer. We're just going to do a breath, a breathing exercise to finish. I'm fine to cross my legs. You can leave them straight out if you like. So we're just going to do Kapalabhati breathing, okay, to finish off. Okay, to finish off, to clear the mind after a lot of adrenal um, massage. So that means the adrenaline in the body is being um, regulated. So we're gonna clear the mind to allow the energy to start coming through. So to do that, Kapalabhati is the quickest way. So we're gonna do just three lots of 30 strokes. So the one stroke is, so just remember it's exhale. Inhale comes naturally. So do three lots of 30, how you wanna do them. Um, I'm just gonna go through it obviously for the video. So. When you're ready, just a nice deep breath in. And exhale. Take a couple of breaths. And remember, focus on the belly button. In, out, in, out, in, out. Inhale. And breathe. Take a nice breath. You might feel a bit light in the head and that's really nice. Deep breath in. And breathe. When you're ready, take your time, slowly come back into a final pose, Shavasana. Laying back, relaxation. The best way to be is bring your feet apart, so either side of the mat. Arms away from the body, palms facing up. Then just lift the top half of your body, shoulder blades together, chin towards the chest and relax. That's the most comfortable position in Shavasana to be in. It's allowing the diaphragm to work correctly. So you're getting 
perfect breathing as you're laying on your back. For the next few minutes, I want you to start focusing on Chittakasha again. So Chittakasha is that dark space between the eyebrows. So bring the eyes to look up as your eyes are closed. Your eyelids are closed. Bring your eyes to look up at that space. Start focusing on that space. Just let everything else go and just focus on Chittakasha. The more you focus on Chittakasha, you'll start seeing shapes, colors maybe. Now just look at the depth of Chittakasha. Look how deep that place is. It's almost like you can just continually Focus there into this deep, deep dark hole. Keep focusing on Chittakasha. Now just focus on any colour or any shape that's in Chittakasha. And just look at it and let it go. Just keep looking at it and let it go. Now I want you to focus on the breath. So bring your attention to the breath and bring your attention to the belly button. Feel the belly button moving in and out with every breath. Now let's take focus on the spine. We've worked really, really hard on the spine today. So just visualize your spine. Just visualize the vertebrae. Now visualize the vertebrae and visualize space in the vertebrae. Visualize the length of your spine. Now take a nice deep inhale, filling up the spine with air from the bottom to the top. Release the air, letting all the spine completely empty, leaving it empty. Fill it up again with an inhale. and release it with an exhale. So we're just clearing any stagnant energy out of that spine. Now what I want you to do is every inhale, say to yourself, so. Every exhale, hum. So on the inhale. Um, on the exhale. And just continue to so hum. Remember the so is two letters. So four seconds in, two seconds a letter. The hum, three letters, six seconds to release. Now just leave the breath, just allow the breath to be normal. And just go back to Chittakasha, so start looking in that space between the eyebrows. Just see if any colors have changed, any shapes have changed. Has it gotten deeper? Is it darker? Is it lighter? Is it more relaxing there now? This is a place where we can't pick up any, any communication. 
on the prey. Any stored communication you can't access here. So continually look in that spark. Feel the natural breath as you're looking in Chittakasha. And now just, if you can see a color, just take note of that color. If you can see a shape, take note of the shape. Whatever you see in there, just take note of that now. And slowly relax the eyes and relax the entire body. Nothing else to do, just relax. Now just listen for the sounds around you, externally. Hear those sounds. And then just feel your body laying on the floor. So just feel that connection between the floor and the body. And then just thank yourselves for dedicating this entire time on the mat to yourself on a Saturday morning. You've done an amazing thing for your body and mind, that's for sure. Send off a gratitude, really nice time to send off a gratitude to someone in your life. And then when you're ready, start wiggling the toes and the fingers. And rolling to the right hand side. Just take a breath on the right hand side. And then work your way up to Sukhasana, comfortable seated pose. Once you get into Sukhasana, take that nice deep breath in. So maybe the last time you focus on that breath completely today. And then a long, slow exhale. Thank you so much for being here today. It was such a pleasure to take you through today's class. And you, know, you should feel really, really amazing in the spine today. So I hope um, you have a wonderful rest of Saturday. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. It was great. Thank you. See you Thank tomorrow. You, mm. you all look really spaced out. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow if you can get there. Yeah, thanks. See you Monday. Okay. I've got see you guys. Bye. Training. <laughs>